Hello, hello plant people. Welcome back if you're returning to my channel and if you guys are new and just finding me for the first time, my name is Jen. I go by the Leafy Geek here and also on Instagram and I'm going to talk about plants like I usually do. <laughs> So I have kind of a combo video today for everybody. I have some updates uh, with my begonia situation, so I thought I would share that. And I also wanted to um, do the Plant Plans 2021 tag that was started by Scott Grows an Avocado Tree. Love the channel. Go check him out. I'll have his info linked below. So I recently saw a bunch of these videos come out and uh, it, what was really cool is that Pam's Pretty Plants recently did this, this plant tag but kind of opened it up for everybody, which I really do appreciate because sometimes I, I don't know if other people feel this way, but I feel a little bit weird sometimes hopping on a tag when I haven't been actually tagged. Uh, a lot of them are geared toward you, you know, you do the questions and then you tag a few other people on PlantTube and then that kind of passes along through the, the community that way. Um, but when you're a smaller channel and kind of hard to find and you're kind of getting your legs under you in this community, sometimes having those larger channels open it up to anybody uh, on these tags can be really, really nice <laughs> in a lot of ways. Just being able to participate, it kind of makes us feel, I'm not speaking for everybody, but it makes me feel like I can participate and, you know, answer some of these questions and get to know other people. So I do really appreciate that. So thank you, Pam, for opening that up. Uh, but yeah, I'll share with you some uh, updates from my first begonia order. That was an order of six from Steve's Leaves in December. <laughs> and then, guys, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> I ordered another five begonias from Steve's Leaves this last month and they just got to me a couple of days ago. I've been letting them acclimate for a few days. Uh, so I'll show you what I got there too. But in the meantime, kind of interspersed between my show and tell, I'm going to answer some of these questions. And we'll just kind of see what this video turns into. So I'm going to show you some begonias. Um, these are the ones that, uh, they were my first begonias ever. I've never owned a begonia before I've owned these six. So this was my first Steve's Leaves order. All of my begonias that I have in my home, I've purchased from Steve's Leaves. So I ordered begonias, A, that I, I did do my research a little bit. I ordered begonias that I thought might be a little bit easier for a beginner. So most of mine, if not all of mine, are either a cane begonia or some type of shrub-like begonia, shrub hybrid. I don't own any Rex or Rhizomatous begonias because I've heard those are a little bit tougher to start with when you're just getting into begonias. So let's just hop on into what I've got here. I've just got this wall of begonias sitting right here and in front of me. It's kind of great. So this was my begonia white chandelier. I think this is the first one I unboxed, honestly. And, uh, you know, I would say the six that I got originally, they all kind of entered my home in various states of okay. Um, this one was a little, a little bit unhappier than a few of the other ones with its situation, I think. It was just, it crisped up pretty hard the first, like, couple of weeks that I had it. But it stabilized a little bit. Uh, honestly, all six of these begonias I recently repotted. So, they're in a little bit larger pots. I noticed that was kind of becoming an issue as I was learning how to water them and their watering schedule. Uh, they really needed an extra boost and they were in these very small, I don't even know if they were three inch uh, nursery pots. So I went ahead and I took the initiative and got them one size up. Um, so they have a little bit more soil. It's still very aerated. It's a 50-50 mix of peat and perlite. Um, so I'm hoping that it will retain wa enough water that they want. Um, that will kind of slow the crisping down a little bit, um, but will also keep their roots happy. Because um, I know they don't like being in huge pots with, you know, not very good draining soil. So 
Begonia White Chandelier is doing really, it, it's stabilized. I will say that about it. Um, quite a few of the original leaves got really, really crispy. Um, so I did kind of trim those up a little. Um, not to say, you know, plants crisping, that's a normal thing. Um, it's a normal part of plant ownership, having crispy tips. But <laughs> I went ahead and just trimmed those up and kind of let the good leaves focus on helping the plant the most. And then I was recently rewarded with a couple of new leaves. So this one got at least two or three. I think this was one that came out in my care as well. So stable, white chandelier, stable. So this is Begonia Benigo Pink. And it also kind of struggled a little bit when it acclimated. There were a few leaves that really went crispy on me. Um, a few leaves that I lost off the stems there. But as you can see, it's kind of rebounded, I'd say. Um, so all of the new growth up here. Um, this was one of the original leaves. I think one of only a few. I might have had two leaves that stuck around um, that were original. Those you can see are kind of the greener ones, I think, um, and the darker ones. But all of this new growth is really encouraging to me. <laughs> Um, so this one does look a lot more like a like an upright tree than the previous one. Um, so again, a cane begonia. But yeah, just has some really great looking foliage on it. I'm really happy with this one. I think my dream for these is to pick up one of those IKEA greenhouse cabinets um, and keep this in my north facing window in my bedroom and just have all of my begonias and calatheas in that one space that I can keep and control the humidity in a little bit better. Uh, that's kind of a goal for me. I guess that's one of the questions, so <laughs> maybe we'll come back to that. But yeah, right now these are all sitting in my north facing window in my living room. So that's Benigo Pink. Also, still alive. Maybe we'll just do it this way. I'll show you a couple and then I'll answer a question and we'll just kind of keep going and see what happens. I don't have a plan, you guys. <laughs> So for the Plant Plans 2021 tag, that's from Scott Grows an Avocado Tree, first question is, what plant brought you the most joy in 2020? Oh, that's a really good question. Maybe I should have prepared a little before sitting down to film this. <laughs> I think, I, you know what? No, you know what? I'm going with begonia. Begonia, just a general begonia situation answer for this question. Um, I really do think it ha they have brought me probably the most joy. I love Hoyas, but I think that the opportunity to learn something new and grow a new type of plant and be somewhat successful with growing that type of plant so far really does bring me joy. Learning brings me joy you know, <laughs> succeeding in areas that I haven't tried before bring me joy. Um, so it, it just, I think that's my answer for that one. I really do think that I'm going to classify all of these begonias into that particular answer, but just kind of along the lines of that, if I did have to pick one, since it says plant, not plants or plant type, I'm going to go with this one, and this is the next one I wanted to show you anyway. So this is Begonia Lucerna. This was also in that original Steve's Leaves order. And yeah, I really do think this, this plant can embody and represent the other members of its little Begonia family here in that it brought me a lot of joy in 2020. It was granted at the end of 2020, but it still counts, came in December. Um, so... Yeah, I think it's going to have to be this one. Just look at it though. So a lot of the growth up top is new. I've got at least two new leaves up here on this particular stem on this cane. Um, so the darker, the darker colored leaves. I've got some more growth happening on that stalk. And then on the second stalk that was in the same nursery pot, also have some new growth happening. So overall, just a really steady grower and just kind of a, a really stalwart 
good grower. Like it, it's not requiring a lot from me, which I was surprised with. I've been pretty observant and keeping an eye on these guys just because I know that until I get the watering down and that schedule, I know myself and I know how easy it is for me to kind of forget. <laughs> so I, I'm just very impressed with this one. Again, this is Begonia Lucerna. And again, it, it, it just has the beautiful red underside that a lot of begonias are known for. Um, and just beautiful spots on the leaves. And the leaves are huge, as you can see. This, these are not small leaves. So I have a feeling this plant is going to need some room real quick. But yeah, Begonia Lucerna is uh, the third Steve's Leaves Begonia that I have an update for. It's also the plant that I'm going to say brought me the most joy in 2020. All right, so next couple, I'm just going to show you these really quickly because there's not a lot going on with them. They're probably in about the same place health-wise, um, but these are also from that first Steve's Leaves order. This is my Begonia American River. As you can see, this one has some pretty, pretty crusty tips. Um, on a lot of the leaves so I think it might be getting a little bit too much light where it is I do have a, a an aspect light in the vicinity of these um, I think it might be too much light for them it's good bright light but this one I think is just positioned on that shelf in a place where it gets too much of it so I'm gonna try and rearrange a little but uh, as, as you can see it's kind of hard to tell <laughs> on this one where the crispy is um, especially if you're kind of far away. This looks perfect. It's far from perfect, but I'm okay with it. We're working on it. And um, this one I have not seen any new growth from yet, uh, surprisingly. Well, maybe this one. So I've got a new leaf that has recently unfurled a bit, and I do see some new growth points on that stem. So I think we're doing okay. Honestly, yeah, there's another one there too. So still growing. I think this one is going to benefit a lot from being in a little bit more soil. It just seemed to be drying out a lot. Um, and when I did check the roots on it, it was pretty root bound in the original container or the original pot that it was in. So I think this one will benefit from that and from a more consistent, even moisture level in the soil. I mean, all of them will, but we'll see if we can combat some of this crispage. So that's Begonia American River, another cane uh, hybrid. And then this one is my Arabian Sunset. And again, this is one of my, it, it has been consistently one of my favorites. Um, this one in Lucerna. I am noticing too that this one was getting really crispy. And I don't think this one particularly likes inconsistent watering at all. I don't think any of them do. But this one seemed to really really throw a tantrum about it when it happened to it, but <laughs> I, I think all of these begonias have experienced some issues um, at one point or another where I just forgot or underwatered or didn't catch it in time and they just went and drooped. Um, they did rebound, but I think you can see from some of the leaf damage on this one that it really wasn't happy with that situation. So just going to pay a lot more attention to that, but it does have some really beautiful pristine leaves on it still as well. Um, some of these are original. They came with the plant, which is great. I love this one because it has these little, these little tiny, oh, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. It's just so rad, guys. These little hairs that stick up from the surface of the leaf. I'm sure there is a scientific name for what these are. I don't know it. So if you do, put it in the comments, please. Uh, but Arabian Sunset has just these beautiful, also, like, where, what is this called? Is this a, pe the petiole I know is, a, is this part of the plant. So where, where the leaf kind of intersects with the stem right there. They almost glow in bright light. Just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful plant. I'm really thrilled with this one. Really happy to have this one in my collection. But again, I really do think that this one appreciates more consistency with watering and also likes a lot of humidity. 
what is at the top of your wish list in 2021? The top of my plant wish list. I'm going to be putting out a video on that, um, but I do have to say there are quite a few Hoyas on that wish list. I would really like to acquire a Hoya manaparensis. Uh, I think I've heard that those can be quite finicky uh, and sort of tricky to grow um, and that they don't necessarily ship well. So I'm just kind of taking my time on that one. Um, I also don't want to pay $100 for a cutting of it. Uh, I don't know. A lot of, lot of Hoyas. Um, and so like, like I said, I think I am going to save quite a few of, of those that are on that list for a uh, video that I am planning on doing. Um, as far as non-Hoyas go, I, oh, I'm i really interested in acquiring a variegated bird's nest fern. I have a regular bird's nest fern in my house, but I would love to find a variegated one. I've seen those online, those look really cool. I don't know how easy they are to grow um, in comparison with a regular bird's nest fern, but I'd say that those, you know, plus a few others, I don't really know that I have them in order on my lists currently, but those are the ones that I'm, that I'm really kind of thinking about lately. So, here is the last plant that I have to show you from my first Steve's Leaves Begonia order. And this little guy is my Begonia Penny Lawn or Penny Lane, it's L-A-H-N. Uh, this one has stayed pretty diminutive, and I have a feeling that it's going to. I think that's just how this plant grows. Um, it's quite compact, and it stays relatively small. Um, but this one I have some plans for. I am planning on, and this actually kind of segues into question number three. Um, what is something you need to do with your plants in 2021? What I'm planning on doing is uh, planting up my Biorb. I acquired a Biorb Air 360 and it's gonna get planted <laughs> one of these days. I've got plants for it. Uh, I just kind of need to do it. So I have a feeling I want to put at least one begonia in there and based on kind of ideas I have around the design of that thing and um, just the layout that I'm, that I'm planning with it, I think this one would be the begonia to put in there. I think it's going to just really add to the ambiance in there and it's gonna, it's gonna really look good in there. So that's, that's something that I'm planning on doing with a few of my plants. Uh, in 2021 is getting them into that biorb and seeing how they how they grow and how they improve. Um, another <laughs> thing that I was that I was mentioning, and this is relevant to all of these begonias, is some of my more sensitive plants. Um, I've, I've on my plant journey, I've really tried to to grow plants in my house that I felt would do well in the conditions that I have in here already. Um, along the way, I've slightly adjusted that as I've made modifications in my home that could Im improve the environment for some plants that need a little bit more. Um, so improving lighting, improving humidity levels, all of that. Um, what I'm really interested in acquiring is one of those IKEA greenhouse cabinets. Um, I'm not planning on doing any significant alterations to it. Um, there are some really great videos about how to do that. A lot of people, you know, seal the, the, the greenhouse, the interior for um, extra humidity. I might not do that. I might not even do that. Um, just to have more of an enclosed space, though, so that the plant's natural humidity levels kind of boost. If I wanted to put a smaller humidifier in there, it would still have airflow from the openings um, in the greenhouse itself. Um, between, you know, I think there's, you know, the, the glass and, and the, the frame of the greenhouse aren't entirely airtight. So uh, I'm really, I'm really, really thinking that that might be a good solution for some of these more humidity sensitive plants like begonias, like my calatheas. The north facing window in my bedroom is the place for it. Um, so I, I'm excited to kind of figure that out and, and plan around that and see what I can do there uh, to to, to get that uh, in motion. I know that they're not super cheap. Neither is the buyer orb though. You do what you gotta do. Um, I feel like that would be 
kind of a next step and a, and a really cool project to, to kind of put together and be able to display these beautiful plants in a place that I get to see them <laughs> every day because that's where I am at least twice a day and awake. So Penny Lawn is the sixth and final begonia in that first Steve's Leaves order that I placed in Minnesota in the winter. And of course I didn't, I didn't stop there. I placed another order. Like I said, I wouldn't. Guys, I have a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. <laughs> I'm gonna show you the first of five plants from that second Steve's Leaves order. So hang on just a second. It's down here. So <laughs> this begonia is one of five that I recently ordered. Um, like I said, I, I got the order delivered a couple of days ago, so these plants have all had a few days to to acclimate out of the box. I would say five out of or four out of the five are doing pretty darn well. This one's not doing so great. So this is my begonia latustii, latestui. Uh, <laughs> As you can see, it's not much to look at. A lot of the leaves dropped. This is actually the top part of the original plant um, that I am trying to repropagate in the soil. I don't know how this is going to go. Um, but it just seems like it came into my house, came out of the box, and threw a fit. Um, the leaves just completely dried up. Uh, a lot of the smaller ones like had leaves all up and down the stalk. They fell off. Like I, did, I barely even touched the plant. It just was its initial reaction. So I am going to try. <laughs> um, this was one that I was hoping to put in my bio orb as well, but it, you know, I don't want to put a plant in there that's already kind of struggling. I just want to, especially a new plant. I want to kind of give it some time to acclimate and see how it does. So I really just have it in this glass cloche with perlite in the bottom. And we'll just go from there. It's in my hospital plant area. We'll see. Poor little guy. Sorry, dude. Oh, another leaf just fell off. All right, so question four. What would you like to learn in 2021? That's a really good question. I would like to learn more about YouTube. <laughs> so I, you know, I've been doing this channel for about a year now, and I've had a blast um, filming. I, you know, I, right now it's, it's a very basic, you know, setup that I have. Um, I don't really have any filming lights. I don't have any special camera equipment. I don't have a gimbal. I don't, I just film off my phone. So I have a, a tripod, a little desk tripod that I set up and that's really it. Sometimes I use a mic, but I seem to have more issues using a mic than not. <laughs> um, but I really, I, a goal for myself for this year is to become a little bit more versed, um, and learned in the art of filming and making YouTube videos. And I want to I wanna up my technology game a little bit, and I would like to kind of structure my videos a little bit better um, to have more educational content that's practiced and, you know, coherent <laughs> in a lot of ways. A lot of times I just kind of sit down and film things and don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, but I would like to be a little bit more strategic and a little bit more intentional, intentional about how I film things uh, on this channel, because I think that that would, you know, benefit everybody who watches it. <laughs> that might be a little bit more enjoyable for you guys. Um, and I think that it would just, I, when I do things I like in, in my regular work life and in my writing life, I, I do things with an air and a mindset of making things as good as I can and getting them out into the world. Um, with YouTube, I know that that schedule and that that um, that just means of doing things is a little bit more 
quick paced, especially, you know, comparing making a YouTube video to writing a novel. It's a lot different in terms of timeline and pace and structure. Um, so I'd like to be a little bit more intentional about um, the level of professionalism that I bring to some of these videos. Some I feel like I've done fairly well on, but there are definitely some looking back where I kind of go, ooh, that could have been so much better. It's a good idea. It just didn't, it didn't happen the way I wanted it to. It, things didn't come together the way I would hoped they would. And maybe that's, you know, my learning curve. So I think it's been a year. I think it's time to really kind of focus and, and learn some new things about, you know, putting videos out in this community and improving uh, on, on the things that I've already learned and already done. Okay, the next two begonias I'm going to show you, one of them, well this one, looks a lot like my American River, but the patterning on the leaves is a little bit different. Um, you'll see that it looks very similar. I just believe that it's going to have larger splotches of silver on them. This is begonia iscapates. And this begonia <laughs> I was kind of disappointed with when it arrived. Um, well, when it arrived, I was very excited about it. And then the two prettiest leaves on it, they were probably the oldest leaves as well. They dropped. I don't know why, <laughs> but both of them dropped. And I still think the plant is beautiful, but I was just so annoyed and bummed about that. Um, they are currently in my grow box. I am leaf propagating them. Uh, we'll see what happens there. So that's a fun learning experiment. Um, but this is Begonia Iscapades. And as you can see, new growth on the plant. I'm pretty sure that was already there um, when they shipped. So I'm not sure if they are going to survive well or not. Uh, but they're still there after a few days. So I'm just got to water this. Yeah, I'm really trying to be more intentional with their watering too. So Iscapades. I'll show you one more, and then I will answer the second to the last question. So this begonia is called Begonia dicoroa. And again, all of the begonias that I got in the second order were either shrub-like or cane-like hybrid begonias. And so this one, it's really interesting because it seems like a lot of the new growth comes out spotted. And as the leaves mature, they kind of fade down into like a deeper green, which I'm noticing on this particular one. So there's a lot of variation just on the, this single plant. I think there are two begonia plants in the pot. Um, so a lot of variation between the two and then a lot of variation even just on a single stalk, which is cool. And, you know... Kind of a smoother edge to the leaves like the white chandelier um, which i appreciate both but they come out really cute it's a cute little angel wing so that'll be fun to see and grow i've heard this one does pretty well in the home again i gotta water it one thing i'm learning about these plants is that they are so delicate. It's so easy for me and my big butterfingers to like come in and just damage the heck out of these new little baby leaves. So I'm trying really hard not to do that. This one, <laughs> speaking of, is Begonia Mrs. Miller. And it's kind of, it was described as more of a compact grower, um, kind of low low growth but still really beautiful foliage this one has a slightly pinker tinge to it than um, the two previous ones do they are pretty green um, so this one again has i believe will develop the red undersides to it um, and this one was actually blooming when i got it oh you can see that little blooms right there this one just fell off because i'm clumsy so Begonia Mrs. Miller, the second to the last plant. And then the second to the last question from the plant tag, Plant Plans 2021, is what can your subscribers expect in 2021? <sighs> well, I am going to do a lot more uh, gardening 
on the channel, I think. I did have a series last year um, kind of showing you what my regular process was, um, kind of the way I've done my vegetable garden for several years now. Um, plus, I had at that time incorporated some seeds starting because I had older seeds that I was using. Uh, that is going to kind of be different this year because I have not acquired any, and nor do I really know where I will be acquiring any um, ready-to-go plants um, for my gardens, either my, my vegetable garden or another project that I'm working on for my gardening um, this year. Uh, my local, like across the street local um, plant sourcing place, my the little nursery that I always got my vegetables from, uh, closed. So not really sure where that's going to reconvene. Um, I'm probably going to have to check out some farmer's markets up here. But that by that point, by the time the farmer's markets start, it's just very late. Because um, things are producing already. People really aren't selling um, you know, plants to plant in our own gardens, unless they're flowers. Um, and even then, it's kind of hit or miss. So I am starting a lot, if not most or all, of my garden from seed this year. I'm trying out some new things. Um, I did do seed starting last year, but it's going to be on a bigger level this year. Uh, I don't really know how, <laughs> how it's going to go. It's going to be a big experiment in a lot of cases. I've never started flowers indoors. Um, I've started a few vegetables indoors. Um, I filmed that last year, so um, that's a big part of the series um, from last year was germination and doing seed testing. So gardening <laughs> is kind of where um, a lot of my attention is going to be in the spring and summer. As far as houseplants go, I am really going to try and do a lot more um, a lot more care tips I would really like to do. I would like to do a lot of um, kind of individual plant featurettes. Uh, that would be fun. Um, I would also really like to branch out and be brave and do some collaborations with some of my fellow plant tubers. I think that would be really, really exciting. Um, as 2021 progresses and potentially we as a community and as a country are becoming more vaccinated with this whole fiasco that we had to deal with the past year. Um, as soon as it's safe or deemed safe or I feel comfortable or both, um, I would like to go and take you on some tours of some planty places around me. But that, that's definitely an idea. I would like to do more plant tours of places. Um, and probably just also, you know, plant tours of my home. And again, just kind of up my game with the, uh, with the production level and the, and the technology and the quality of my videos. So stay tuned, I guess. Last begonia, guys. So this beauty, oh my God, it's a beauty. This is Begonia Irene Ness is the variety name. And as you can see, the leaves are on a par with uh, my Lucerna size-wise, but they also have just this very cool um, serrated edge to the leaf. They remind me a lot of maple leaves, which I love. Kind of elongated, stretched out maple leaves with that red underside. Some really cool veining on the underside too with that red. Um, so this one's doing quite well. Uh, really just a strong hefty hefty plant and uh, I have no complaints <laughs> about this one uh, it just was very impressed with it when I even straight out of the box it looked sparkly it, it looks really nice now too really really in good shape so begonia Irene Nuss and that is my haul those are the begonias I own I have 11 begonias Oops. Uh, last question is the tag. And this is kind of interesting. Who are you tagging? So I, <laughs> I'm going to put people's names down in the description that I would love for you to check out their channels. Um, I follow them and I think that they are also um, maybe in the same boat I am in terms of getting connected on here. 
I think it would be really neat um, for some of the folks who are looking to build their channel. I mean, some of us do it just for fun. We're on here just to put out content and show our plants around and have a good time and meet other people. Um, but there are some people who are trying to grow um, their channel. So I would like to highlight them and invite them to join the tag too if they want to do a video. If you don't, no worries, don't do it. <laughs> Just enjoy the others um, from people who are doing them. But I do want to invite folks to participate. So I'm gonna put them in the and their channels in the description down below. And I also just wanna, again, extend a big thank you to um, Pam's Pretty Plants and the folks um, who did videos and did open up, you know, the, the share to everybody who was interested in doing one. Um, it does kind of, <laughs> at least for me, it boosts my confidence a little bit knowing that um, the invitation is extended and I can kind of participate and put some content into the world and share this awesome plant tag because it is really cool. It's, it got me thinking a lot about what I want to do um, this year, um, both with my plants, with my garden, and just life in general. So thank you, Scott, from Scott Grows an Avocado Tree. Really, really fun tag. So thanks. All right, you guys, that's it for me. If you would like to subscribe, please feel free. Until next time, enjoy your plants.